When you hear that someone has been mailing bombs to random innocent people, you start to get a visual in your head of who that person might be. And I gotta say, the Unabomber Ted Kaczynski it turned out to be about what I expected. Guy looks like they found him in a gutter, in a puddle of his own piss, wearing his underwear outside of his pants. Does seem like the type of person who would think it's a valuable use of his time to build bombs and mail them to innocent people who never did anything wrong to him in any way. Mystery solved, end of story, I can move on with my life. And it wasn't until decades later that a detail was brought to my attention that just made the whole thing unfathomable. Genius, math professor, Harvard educated, IQ of 167. What? I had to see more about this. So I came across the manifesto, which read like it was written by a guy they found passed out in a gutter in a puddle of his own piss wearing his underwear outside of his pants. So it still fits the picture. The baffling part about it is that anyone takes it seriously. Why anyone would say, wow, Unabomber really got it right. Well, Ted Kaczynski predicted the future after all. He actually has some pretty good ideas, you know. It's not the worst book I've ever read, the Unabomber Manifesto, but it is in a world where Alex Cross's trial still exists. But it's definitely the worst nonfiction I've ever read. For an example of good nonfiction, check out Mick Foley's autobiography, Have a Nice Day. A guy that got hit in the head with steel chairs for a living, eight documented concussions, many more undocumented, with all those brain swelling injuries, he still had a better grasp of what it means to be alive than the genius math whiz, Ted Kaczynski. I'd like to take a whiz on his manuscript. Before even reading a single word, how does anyone not immediately dismiss anything the Unabomber says? Mr. Nature, Mr. Down with Industry, Mr. We Need to Preserve Natural Beauty and Get Back to Our Natural Way of Life. How many trees were destroyed to publish this garbage of a book? If, for those of you younger enough to not know about this, books used to all be published on paper. So Ted Kaczynski blew people up and threatened to blow more up if they didn't publish his book which just pulls the rug out from under his entire philosophy. He allegedly began his reign of terror because after he moved out to his shack in Montana to get away from technology and overpopulation and live a more natural life, a road was built across the nice walk he used to take. And that sent him into such a rage that he decided to go on a reign of terror and cause violence to innocent people who never did anything to him in any way, personally. How many nature walks were destroyed by the publication of this garbage Unabomber manifesto? How many innocent trees were chopped down and made to the landscape look ugly? So right away, that just... He's a walking hypocrisy. How does anyone take anything that's said in the book seriously when the very concept of the book undercuts the whole thing? At least the road that was built across his walk in Montana would help ambulances get patients to hospitals. It would help cops catch criminals. It would help civilians get to their jobs to support their families. All the Unabomber Manifesto did was give nerds a feeling of edginess by quoting the vague, formless philosophies of this murderer. Ooh, I'm, I'm quoting the Unabomber and saying the Unabomber was right. Tech will change our way of life. Whoa, what a genius. Technology had consequences. Like every other thing that exists, it had consequences. And just ignoring all of the benefits, but focusing on the consequences, this makes him a genius. It's one step up from the derelict on the corner with the sign that says the end is near. Only... Kaczynski uses bigger words. But it's about the same short-sighted philosophy. He's vague enough that it's true, but not specific enough to make any actual constructive argument, as good nonfiction does. 
So unlike the Unabomber Manifesto, I will actually give examples to illustrate my points because that's how you communicate complex ideas to the masses. And my thesis is that it looks like Ted Kaczynski mailed a bomb to his own manuscript because this thing is a mess. It's full of holes in logic that you can see through. Like I said, he uses lots of big words and puts them in the right order. So it looks nice when the nerds quote him, but the ideas that his words are conveying are as short-sighted as Mr. Magoo. The first sentence alone is already a disaster. It's already indicative of a mind incapable of seeing the big picture. The Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. And then to sum up the next few lines, it's basically, we, we live longer now, but everything is worse and will continue to get worse. This, the, the, the tunnel of this vision is so narrow that an ant would have trouble crawling through it. And it's not just like the seed to plant further discussion later on in the book. Every line that comes after this is basically synonymous with this short-sighted, narrow-visioned idea that it's just all consequences and will continue to get worse unless we completely get rid of industry. He's, a, he's attributing every ill that exists to technology and ignoring the benefits. There are ills. And if you've seen my other true crime videos, you know I'm on the border of being technophobic. I'm worried about the progression of new technologies and their effects on human existence. But you have to look at the big picture to get an accurate path of how you're supposed to navigate that future. Not just saying, get rid of everything. Because to speak in such general terms without any specifics is to say that all plants are bad because poison ivy exists. We shouldn't drink any water because some of it's dirty. Don't travel across any land because tiny patches of it our lava. In fact, the Unabomber Manifesto should probably title, he probably should have titled the book The Floor is Lava. That's a better title for this book. The Floor is Lava and nothing else. So, some of the benefits that Kaczynski should have brought up to make a stronger argument for technology, how about cars are extensions of our legs? Human beings have wanted to travel and traveled long before industry ever existed. And it just, through some gradual increases in advances in our evolution, we got to a point where now we're at automobiles. And that allows us to travel much more conveniently and have way more options for survival and thriving. Homes are extensions of our skin. People got tired of being eaten alive while they were sleeping out in the middle of the nowhere and being exposed to the whims of nature. So they started to build shelters. They got tired of relying on caves. They built shelters, which advanced to the homes that we have today in buildings and skyscrapers. It was necessity, convenience to help our survival. And every one of them has their consequences, but don't only focus on the consequences. He's just looking at the glasses half empty and nothing else, ignoring the water in the bottom of it. The Unabomber shack that he moved out to in the middle of Montana to escape technology is a product of industry. He didn't use his bare hands to break down the trees and rip them into perfectly cut boards. It was tools and pre-made industrial things, whatever. I don't know how he built it, but it's basically a industrially created shack. The money that his parents gave him to live alone in Montana in that shack was created by industry, technology. So, Unabomber was allowed to do everything he wanted by industry. For him to focus only on the consequences and nothing else is like a millionaire basketball superstar saying, we really need to get rid of the ball in the hoop. Basketball will be better then. And everyone should be looking at that like, uh, dummy, the only reason you have everything that you have is because you were good at putting the ball into the hoop. Without putting the ball, without the ball in the hoop and your ability to put one in the other, you would have nothing. 
you would be way worse off. And the response to that would be, uh, buy my shoes. And that's about the level of thinking that Kaczynski is at with his philosophical ramblings here. So by the time I got into the next few lines, I think I figured out how Unabomber got the idea for his crimes because it's officially that, like I said earlier, they built a road across his nice nature walk and re he realized that he had to stop industry because it was ruining his ability to get back to nature and it was going to destroy everything. That's the surface reason, but I think the real reason is because he found a beta reader for his manifesto here and that beta reader got a few lines in and said something to the effect of, I'd rather this blow up in my face than have to read one more line of this trash. And Unabomber, instead of saying, well, gee, how can I improve it? I want to effectively communicate my ideas to the masses because that's what the important part is. Instead, he went, blow up in your face, huh? Interesting. Because that's the way he thinks. That's how narrow-minded and short-sighted he is, only thinking about himself and no one else. Pretending to think about everyone else, but only in the way that it affects him. So as we get into the next few lines, the biggest problem throughout the entire thing, which is exemplified in almost every line, is... Kaczynski's just oversimplified, overgeneralizing of the system. He just refers to the system throughout without ever elaborating on what the system is. So here's the next quote I came across that was worth delving into. If the system survives, it will reduce human beings and many other living organisms to merely engineer products as cogs in the social machine. And, wow, wow, that sounds really nice for the phony academics to quote and say that he predicted everything. But I had a few questions, and as we go along, you're going to see that they're rather rhetorical because the answers are self-evident. Number one, what is the system? Unabomber never elaborates on what the system is because he can't. Because the system is people. The system is everybody. A tiny percentage of those people who make up the system abuse their power and they are eventually removed by the checks and balances of the masses. That's how it's always worked and will continue to work, which is why today, even though the Industrial Revolution has led to more advanced technology than ever before and accelerating at a greater rate, there is no one entity or one person that controls everything because of those checks and balances of the masses who outnumber the psycho minority who try to abuse that power. We're doing pretty good so far. Number two, all life has always been a cog in the machine. Have you heard of the ecosystem? All life has been part of that system for four billion years. All life ingests one type of matter and expels a product. So every time Unabomber shit in his bucket in Montana, he was a cog in the East ecosystem producing for the industry, which has been around long before humans and will continue long after humans are gone. The ecosystem. So what system is Kaczynski talking about here? Because the ecosystem is way more powerful and way more long lasting and will far outlast the industrial system that he's bemoaning and saying we should get rid of. You're a greater slave to the ecosystem than anyone has ever been to the industrial technology system, which also has its problems. Yes, look at the big picture. The glass isn't just half empty. It's also half full. It's both at the same time. So at this point, you might be wondering, Mike, why did you name this video The Smartest Monster? Well, because Ted Kaczynski is the smartest monster of our time, at least. And the smartest monster is a dumbass. The smartest monster is stupider than the stupidest non-monster that, that exists. Because 
One IQ of 167, got into college at 16, became a mathematics professor. He was great at mathematics, high IQ. He was great at math and pattern recognition and had a good memory. But that's one facet out of many facets that make up human intelligence. I look at human intelligence as if every human being became you, would our species get worse get better, stay the same, or go extinct. For criminals like the Unabomber, who lower themselves to the lowest common denominator of harming innocent people for completely selfish reasons and undermine their own philosophy and justifications for doing so, if everyone got to a point of being like them, that would be the end of the species because everyone would just be out for themselves. They wouldn't care who they harm. And then that would just be the last generation or maybe a few straggler generations afterwards. And if everyone is the same as that, that's the end because everyone's thinking about themselves and no one else. And there's no future. You have to think about to have human intelligence and to preserve a future. You have to think about people other than yourself and their welfare. You have to think about generations in the future how are how are your decisions going to affect the future for example in the past couple years we finally came up with the technology to deflect an asteroid we changed the orbit of an asteroid so while everything else has been going on all these technological achievements the internet and new cures for new diseases We've also been working on changing the orbits of asteroids so they don't destroy the Earth. And well, the Earth will be fine and shake us off like a case of fleas, but it'll destroy our species. It'll destroy our way of life. So if we just get back to nature like Ted wants to, what are they going to do when that doomsday, doomsday asteroid is coming in? Beep. Ah, we're finally here in nature. Technology is completely gone. Overpopulation is gone. We're all living our natural caveman lifestyles again. Beep. Oh, no, there's an asteroid coming. Uh, fire a rocket at it. We got rid of technology, Ted. Uh, send astronauts up there to try to blow it up from the inside. We got rid of ast We got rid of technology, Ted. No. And that's the end of our species. What a genius. What a genius the smartest monster is. Wow, everyone should quote him. It's not too late to stop embarrassing yourself. But should I even do more of this? It's, it's more of the same. I did read the whole thing. It might look like I just read the first page and came up with this whole thing, which I did because I can come up with a paragraph of retort for every single line written. Worst nonfiction I've ever read. Smartest monster, but <laughs> it's a low bar indeed. So I don't know. Let me know if you want to hear more of this or if I've, if I've made my point. Have a nice day.